Hi, and welcome back to Purple Collar Life. I wanted to talk to you about a project I've done this week. We're at camping out on the lake. It's a little bit of a chilly day out on the water today, but one of the things I was excited about on this pontoon boat was this fish finder, and not at all for the reason you'd think. I am 0% a fisherman, but I still think these are really fun to have on a boat to see how deep the water is, how fast you're going, what the water temperature is, and of course, all the fish that are down below you. Even though I'm not a fisherman, I enjoy seeing those little fish, how deep they are, how big it's estimating they are down below. It also lets you see the bottom of the lake. Uh, there's a sonar usually with these, or a, a bottom view. So it's nice to see at this lake particularly, they put a lot of habitats down for fish, whether those are old Christmas trees, or kind of log cabins they build and then they lower down into the bottom of the lake. The other thing is we've had now on this lake, we're at Shenango, I made a video about this lake last year. We've had the jet ski here, we've had multiple ski boats here, and I've never known exactly how deep it is in any particular spot. So I was really looking forward to having this hummingbird wide eye on the new pontoon boat to see how deep it is at all the areas of the lake that we like to explore. So when I bought this pontoon boat, the previous owner told me that he could never get this fish finder to work quite right. He'd hit the power button and one out of a thousand times it would come on, the other 990 time, 999 times it would not. So when I first got in the boat, this was one of the first things I messed with once we put it in water. You only ever want to run a fish finder when the sensor is below water. So when I first got in the boat, I found an accessory switch back here behind the fish finder, flipped that on, hit the power button, this thing came on immediately. And it came on immediately every single time I pressed the power button. But it didn't take me very long to figure out that even though it was coming on, it wasn't actually displaying real data. It was giving me weird depth readings that I knew weren't right. Um, it was giving me fish, like almost as if they were pre-recorded. And I found out in looking up the instruction manual for this, that it was in some type of simulation mode. When I was able to figure out how to get it out of simulation mode, it didn't work at all. So again, this was the Humminbird Wide Eye Fish Finder. And this was in the boat when we bought it. So my next step, you know, I do a ton of research. I didn't want to have to reinstall a whole fish finder on this boat. I wanted to find one that was hopefully plug and play, assuming that the transponder and the power source were still good. So when I just push this little button at the back, it lets you remove the fish finder from the mounting bracket. I could see the connections here on the bottom. So I started shopping for one that looked like it had the same connections to see if I could easily install a new fish finder. And I took a chance on Amazon on this one. This is the Helix 5 by Humminbird. And this particular one is the Chirp GPS. Humminbird Helix 5. Here's what it came from. I ordered this off of Amazon. I'll put an Amazon affiliate link to this down below in the description. Um, but the thing I liked about this one and what I was hoping would work, and it absolutely did, it was plug and play with the transponder that was already on the boat and the power source. So I removed this fish finder. I installed this fish finder. Two cords, direct connection, plugged it in, screwed it down. We've got a working fish finder back on the boat. So like I said, easy transition between the wide eye and this new Humminbird Helix 5. Now, the mounting pattern was a little bit different. This is a wide mount in the front and a little bit narrower in the back. The new pattern is wide front and back, but not as far spaced apart. So that just required me to drill some new holes in this wooden block that we're mounted in. But this is already immediately plugged in telling me the depth, here we're at 18.3 feet, the time of day, and the speed. And I'm not gonna do a full review on this because there's, lots, there's other videos about that on YouTube. But mainly I wanted to let people know if you've got one of these wide eyes or the wide eye 100 and it stopped working, there's a good chance that the same connections can be used with the Helix 5, same brand, Humminbird Fish Finder. Now this does a lot more that this didn't do. I've got charts on here, I can see the lake I'm on, the, the pattern I've traversed throughout the lake, kind of chart my location. So I'll get you a picture of that on the video. 
Um, I can see the depth, I can see our speed, which is nice because this pontoon boat does not have a speedometer. Uh, we're never out there blazing super fast on a pontoon boat, but it is nice to know how fast you are going. Good fish finder view. What I haven't been able to find on this, and I'd appreciate comments down below if you've got a fish finder like this, it's supposed to tell me the water temperature. I can't figure out how to make it do that. I've gone all through the settings. I read through the manual. So if you've got tips on how to make this, show me the water temperature, or maybe there's another thermometer sensor I need somewhere to add in to make that happen. I'd appreciate those comments down below. So here's a view of the fish finder. You can see the various screens. Here we've got fish finder on the right and our stats on the left. Depth is about 18 feet, time of day, speed 0.7 miles per hour, just the wind blowing us. There's the zoomed in and far out view of the depth and the fish finder. See, there's something in the water right there. Here's the cool chart view, so you can hear, see here Shenango Lake. We still have this data down here, but you can see the course we've charted so far. You could mark a waypoint. This is where I think it should be showing me the water temperature. It says 150 degrees T. I don't know what that is, but it's not the water temperature here at Shenango. Here you can see fish finder and chart. And then here's the large view of that fish finder view. And if you're a person like me who had one of these that wasn't working, hopefully this video informed you about how you can choose the Humminbird Helix 5 for the direct replacement for your old wide eye fish finder. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative and entertaining, we'd appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up. Leave those comments down below. Tips for me on how to have this show the water temperature and other direct fit replacements for other fish finders if you're in the same situation that we were in, but with two different fish finders. We'll see you again the next time.